Do you have a soft spot for turn-based combat? How about monster collecting? And hey, would it be great if a game actually worked when you installed it? Well, get ready for some fantastic news, my fellow monster tamers. Cassette Beasts brings a refreshing take to the monster collecting genre. On first glance, one might be forgiven for calling it a Pokemon clone. It does, after all, feature a mix of monster collection, mechanics, and 2v2 battle system, so why not just play a Pokemon game? Well, Cassette Beasts is, in almost every regard, better than Pokemon while drastically being a different experience. Let's dig in. Graphically, Cassette Beasts appears very simple at first. It's a pixel style game, 2.5D. So it probably can't have that much graphical complexity, right? Well, yes, but also no. The art style in this game looks really good. All the characters' portraits are unique, and you can tell most of them apart based on just their sprite. There's also a shocking amount of customization you can do with your character, and by changing a few pieces of cosmetics, you can go from a big boy with a beard and glasses to a cute girl with a sundress. I still can't really wrap my head around how the artists in the game managed to make the sprites so individualized in what is just a few pixels. The monster designs are honestly kind of hit or miss. Some of them are incredibly creative and unique, while others are cool takes on existing stereotypes like Yukiona, while others still are just weird and off-putting. Given the lore of the game, all three descriptions make sense, but it's still hard to get excited about some of the designs, yet others are so cool you just have to have them. With a large variety of designs, part of the game's charm is that it has aesthetics to tailor to almost all personalities. There's also a fusion mechanic, which allows any two monsters to combine into a single monster, but we will get into that in detail later. The music in this game is also really good, and I'm reminded of the soundtrack from the show Ruby. You get your first real taste when you get into the main hub of the game, Harbor Town. There's a nice little peaceful track playing that gets you relaxed. However, when you walk into a building, the lyrics kick in. Whenever you enter a building, the somber, lyrical, laid-back music will send you into an euphoric relaxation, helping you mentally recover before heading back out into the wild. This is but a taste of what the full game offers. Much like graphics, the music alters drastically when you fuse. Every battle theme in the game has lyrics, but they only get sung by fusing with your chosen partner, completely changing the atmosphere and intensity of any battle. From a mundane encounter with generic monster on the beach to a big boss battle. That music ramps the fight with the game's many bosses up to an 11, and after two or three bosses, you'll be belting out the lyrics along with newcomer Shelby Harvey. The girl has some pipes on her, and just thinking about these songs gets me a little emotional. Cassette B seems to be her first work, and I hope to hear more in the future. Similar to Undertale or Persona 5, you'll be listening to the soundtrack long after you watch the credits roll. The gameplay of Cassette Beast is split into two sections, exploration and battling. The exploration is top notch, giving me sweet memories of Monster Sanctuary in that you have to capture certain monsters to gain their abilities for overworld exploration. The first one you get is the ability to glide, which is automatically given as part of the tutorial. As the game progresses, you'll get the ability to dash through rocks, climb walls, double jump, swim, so on and so forth which slowly opens up more of the map as you progress. There are ways an experimental player can sequence break several parts of the game and are likely intentional since the game includes speedrunning options built in. Throughout the game, you'll find random puzzles that open up to treasures which remind me a lot of Genshin Impact or Breath of the Wild. The treasures can range from materials needed to buy goods in town to common or even rare stickers, this game's version of moves. They usually only take about 30 seconds or so to solve, but it's always a nice mental refresher from the battling and exploring, and since the treasure chests are mostly randomized, it can lead to an exceptional endorphin hit if you pop one open and see a different colored text indicating a rare sticker. The second part of exploration is the questing system. The game checks your level, and then the NPCs in town will give you a rumor which will point you to the content you have the numbers to deal with. Be it a vampire hideout, a newly discovered subway tunnel, or the next captain on your mission to join the rangers, you'll always have a quest marker to tell you where to go for your next big throwdown. The quest marker is important due to the large map size. While you won't get lost, it's very possible to just not know where to go next for some of the less obvious missions. For example, locating the optional partner quest. Every quest you complete also gives substantial monetary and experience rewards, so they're always worth doing. As for the combat, you and your chosen partner participate in 2v2 battles, which can also be 2v1 or even 2v3, and on occasion you can get into horde battles which pitch you against up to 6 enemies. You and your partner can equip any monster cassette tape to turn into, each with its own unique moveset, or as the game calls them, stickers. Stickers can range from elemental attacks to buffs, shields, debuffs, passives, etc. I could write an entire novel on just this aspect of the game. For example, I had a monster that autocast an ability that gave it multi-target, which turned any single target attack into an area of effect attack, along with a powerful low accuracy attack. 
and my partner had a monster equipped that had an ability that would auto cast at the start of battle that would give any monster the ability to land its next attack guaranteed. This allowed me to basically shred any random counter on turn 1 as I would unleash a low accuracy powerful single target attack on the entire enemy team with guaranteed hit chance. That is just a taste of the many possible combinations that you can give yourself in combat to give you an advantage or outright break the game. And again, that's just only scratching the surface. Every single monster can have a bootleg version of itself. Every monster in the game has a base typing, but it can also appear as any other type via bootleg. That means you can get an Astral Traffic Crab or a Water Type Bulletino. This is already a very cool mechanic as it affects sticker rarity and typing, but the more important thing is that it also affects fusions. You do get a random bootleg for free near the start of the game via an NPC, but anytime you see the glitchy avatar indicating a bootleg exists, the excitement is akin to finding a shiny Pokemon, except it's better because bootlegs affect gameplay. The game truly shines with the AI algorithms that the developers added. There are 120 monsters in Cassette Beast, but any two of the game's monsters can fuse together. During combat, you get a fusion meter with your partner, and once full, by giving or receiving damage, you can fuse into a super-powered monster which combines the moves and stats of both monsters one for one. The game then uses AI to generate a combined form for the monsters and a name. This mechanic is the best way to defeat the game's bosses and many other challenges, and is absolutely paramount to master. Yes, you can fuse any two monsters together, but there are move combinations and stats to take into account as well. In addition, if you have any active buffs or debuffs, those are combined as well. So you can time your fusions and get a head start in combat by having your individual monsters buff themselves so when they fuse, the resulting monster will have both of those buffs and be able to take its turn like normal rather than having to spend two turns buffing. Again, the combinations and strategy are limited only by your imagination, and I highly recommend experimenting with the game's combat system instead of trying to optimize your team using Google or something. Team building in this game is like creating your own unique piece of art, and it quickly becomes one of its shining features. All of this incredible AI implementation does have its downsides, especially endgame. Since there are no accuracy or damage modifiers, type matchups don't really mean a whole lot, with the exception of one. You will inevitably find a super powerful setup and you will use that almost exclusively for the remainder of the game with more or less reckless abandon. The exception to this is Plastic vs. Fire, as hitting a fire monster with plastic moves will give the fire monster increased evasion, which is incredibly obnoxious. By the time I hit the last two hours of the game, I was fusing two specific monsters together and spamming one specific move over and over again. The game's core charm never really faded, but this did not go unnoticed and I must mention it along with an otherwise glowing review. Cassette Beast is a really, really good game. It's $20 and the player can tell how much heart got put into the game. This game was a work of pure passion and love, and those two qualities bleed out of every rock tree and cliff. Every monster is meticulously designed, and due to the random seated nature of the game, no two playthroughs will ever be the same. In fact, once you finish the game, a plethora of features unlock that make the game incredibly replayable. These features include a speedrunning mode, a nuzlocke mode, you can randomize all the creatures in the game and randomize where they appear, there's a permadeath setting. All of that said, my own initial playthrough was 27 hours, and it's good for 2 to 5 playthroughs at least if you have the time for it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this review and want to see others like it, be sure to do like, comment, subscribe, um, and watch some more videos. It helps the channel get out there in the algorithm, and I will see you in the next one. Deuces, dummies.